that more than anything, more than anything, the fact that this country is secure and at peace, the fact that dozens of countries allied with us are free and at peace has been due to the military strength of the United States, and that strength has been directly due to the men who serve in our armed forces. All right, ladies and gentlemen, three months before JFK was assassinated, that was at the Naval Academy. And joining us right now is the author of a, a fascinating new book, William Doyle, best-selling author, and his newest one is PT-109. And uh, there it is, an American epic of war, survival, and the destiny of John F. Kennedy. Great to see you, sir. Thank you very much. Good to see you again. Thank you. Good All to right. see you. Um, so, uh, 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 an aide to JFK, David Powers, uh, has been quoted as saying, without PT-109, there never would have been a President John F. Kennedy. Agree? Absolutely. And think of that statement. It was one event that John Kennedy used, almost like a, char a chariot, that he rode into Congress, into the Senate, and into the presidency, literally, as I demonstrate in my book. That was his foundation story. You know, we, uh, Donald Trump's foundation story is... I'm a billionaire and I'm a great businessman. I built companies. I made deals. Hillary Clinton. That's pretty good, by the way, the way you said deals. You almost had him down his imitation. <laughs> <going>. <laughs> I need a much bigger red tie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, um, you know, we all have foundation stories. Kennedy's was that he saved men in World War II in a combat environment. And um, it, it, it had an amazing afterlife, which continues to this day. His daughter who actually let me use a photo of her father uh, that's never been published before uh, outside the family, currently serves as the ambassador to Japan. Japan. Yeah. And uh, this year, she, in fact, she met the widow of the boat commander, the ship commander of the Japanese destroyer that nearly that's, killed her father. Wow, that is amazing. All right, you know, we, we, you and I, we grew up on the movie, people of our generation, and, and I, like I was talking to you before, you know, uh, as a kid, I know PT-109 and JFK, uh, but uh, that movie wasn't necessarily representative of, of, as is so often the case, of what actually happened. Talk about what you have, have uncovered and what you, what you present in this book that we maybe didn't know until you, you, you wrote it. Well, m most, much of this is new. Japanese military archives. The Japanese side of the story has never been told properly, in my opinion. I tell it in this story from the viewpoint of men who are on the boat that crashed into Kennedy. Uh, and um, I have also testimony from veterans of the battle that the ship was sunk in, the men who are now 95, 100 years old, including the man who rescued John Kennedy, a man named Bud Liebenau, who's 96, who was a fellow PT boat skipper who was Kennedy's tent mate, his battle colleague, and the, his rescuer. Well, there were, there were two parts to this, right? I mean, there, 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 were, there, were, uh, there was the, um, uh, the part that we all know about and, and the, the, um, you know, the boat sank and all that, but there was something else that, uh, that really um, you know, has become legendary, something, uh, a, a, a second part to this whole scenario that you address in the book. Am I correct? Well, it was the uh, ordeal that yeah. John Kennedy and his 11 uh, crewmen went, went through on remote desert I yeah. on remote islands so in the South really Pacific. We haven't heard to... Uh, too much about, yeah. Where they were starving to death, literally, uh, dehydration, no guns, no radio, no food, and they're trying to stay low in the bushes because they're surrounded by Japanese-held islands. Now, how do you get out of a situation like that? You have no boat. So this, th my book takes you through the survival story yeah. and the castaway story, um, and he was rescued. Kennedy was rescued not only by Bud Liebenau and PT-157 seven days later, but by a, about 15 very heroic Solomon Islands natives who risked their lives to rescue uh, the Americans. It is, it is a fascinating account, and it's riveting. Uh, how did, and we have less than a minute, how did uh, the injury, I mean, we, we heard so much, a lot of after the fact, that Kennedy was always on one drug or another for the pain of the back. If you look at the, his med medical records, you discover something surprising. The back was injured in a tennis injury. Not in the PT 109. That might have aggravated it, but it was, it was also aggravated by bumpy roads in Europe several years earlier when he took a ride across Europe. So it wasn't just PT 109. And like much of Kennedy, uh, the truth is beyond a, uh, many layers yes. of uh, myth. Yes.
<laughs> well, folks, uh, again, this is uh, what, you know, whether you love Kennedy or didn't love Kennedy as a president, and whether you like the Kennedy family or not, uh, PT-109, an American epic of war survival and the destiny of John F. Kennedy, is a fantastic read and an uh, exciting read as well. Good to see you again, sir. Good luck with the book. Thank you. All right, uh, folks, uh, up next, give me five, but first, Remember to tune in tomorrow night at 7 p.m. and 10 p.m. Eastern. We're having another part of our sit-down interview with Dr. Ben Carson, who will be joining us to discuss anti-Christian sentiments in the U.S. and Vladimir Putin in Russia, Iran, and Obama's foreign policy. And I think you're going to be very impressed with what Ben Carson has to say about foreign policy. It's 7 and 10 p.m. Eastern time on the Steve Malzberg Show, only on Newsmax TV. And with that in mind, the fact that Ben Carson and Donald Trump are neck and neck, we want to know who is your... 2016 GOP candidate. Go to NewsmaxPolls.com and vote now. That's NewsmaxPolls.com.